Hi there, it's Dom here and welcome to our daily huddle. If you're joining us for the first time, what we've done is every Monday morning, I used to have a team meeting with the whole, all of our staff here at the DG Institute. And more recently, we've changed it to a daily meeting. So Monday morning wasn't good enough. By the time the next Monday came around, too much had gone on. So I didn't wanna get bogged down in meetings. So we did a little daily huddle. Everyone just stood up in a circle. We ran through things so that we could all be united and have the best possible information available. Available. And I decided to do that for our wider community just because it's such a funny old world right now. So much is happening, so much is changing. Two weeks ago, you probably had plans that involved goals, perhaps holidays, travel, work arrangements. We had a life that was pretty set and pretty comfortable and pretty certain. We knew what was going to happen tomorrow. And then our whole world has been upended and we're living through a time of great uncertainty. Our own prime minister said on the weekend, it's going to be as bad as the Great Depression. We haven't seen anything like this since 1932. And that just sent markets into a tailspin and a panic on Monday and so much so that the whole economy reacted. Thousands and thousands of people were let go, they lost their jobs. Even here at work, we had the phone ringing constantly and there was just a general air of, of bewilderment and people were panicked, people were startled. Um, the Centrelink, my gov site crashed yesterday, it crashed again today. They're rushing through laws and changes where people will get double the benefits and the waiting time disappears. But they're predicting anywhere from between, Westpac came out today and said 11% unemployment, other economists, uh, saying up to 30% unemployment. So hysterical times. But the other end of the spectrum is we've got clients who put in offers on property, lowball offers, you know, months ago, and agents are coming back to them saying, oh, is that offer still there, please? And people are just dropping hundreds of thousands of dollars off the offer and getting it accepted. So it could be the sale of the century for other people. We're definitely living through a time in history where we will look back, we'll say to our grandchildren, yes, I lived through that time and we will be survivors if we have the right mindset. So I talked to you yesterday about uncertain times and just the fear of the unknown. As human beings, we crave certainty. We like to have little hacks in our brain where we've had that prior experience, we have the knowledge, we like to feel like we're in control. So when we don't know what to do, our brain shuts down. When we're in a time of high stress and fear, we release a cocktail of hormones in our body, adrenaline floods to our brain, and the adrenaline shuts down the reasoning rational part of our brain and it's all hands on deck on our fight, flight or freeze, our survival brain, which does not have rationality or logic. And what tends to happen then is that we just freeze. We do nothing. 80% of us just don't know what to do. What's happening is our brain is running all this data saying, what do I do? What happens next? What does this mean? We're looking for a similar experience. In the winter of 1995, there was a historic ferry that, shrank, that sank, the SS Estonia. What happened was that it was traveling from Estonia to Finland. It was one of those ferries that takes cars on it and it had nearly a thousand passengers on board. And one of those passengers was Paul Barney, a British traveler. And he was a world traveler, very experienced. And you can imagine if you travel the world and that's your constant perpetual traveler, you've got your wits about you. You've seen a lot, you've had a lot of pain and, and a lot of experience, a lot of wisdom. And Paul Barney was on the upper deck in the cafe of this boat. It was 1 a.m. He was asleep in his sleeping bag. And what happened was there was a massive storm, rolling seas. And Paul Barney woke up and thought, 
this isn't right, didn't feel right. Fairies do not normally lie on their side. And he realized that there was, he was looking at not the ceiling, but the side wall and a door. So he scrambled across the floor and went out on the deck where the wind was lashing, it was sub-zero temperatures, and he expected there to be pandemonium. People running everywhere, he didn't know what he was gonna do next, and he thought he'd have to fight for his life, like the Titanic. In the end, he said it was the most bizarre thing. People were standing there and he called them statues in the storm. People just literally standing still in bizarre moonlight, waxy nighttime light, and just frozen to the spot. So he tried to formulate a plan. He realized that that wasn't the way to go. He saw people being washed off the deck as they stood there like statues. So he went back inside and he scrambled up. The ferry had broken in half, but he scrambled up um, through wires and whatever he could to get to another side of it where people were a group of people were assembling a life raft so he helped them get it together blew it up and 16 of them went overboard into this life raft and he, he said there was one Estonian woman there who was just screaming hysterically you know when people in the movies just can't get a grip but when when they get bitch slapped across the face you know pull yourself together type thing and from that experience his body was within two degrees Fahrenheit of death so the human body shuts down you die at 80 degrees and he was at 82 degrees when many many hours later he got pulled from the water from that life raft of 16 people only six survived from the thousand on board only a hundred odd survived and it got me thinking, what is it about some people that have a survival gene? Why do some people survive under the same circumstances, the same temperature, the same lifeboat? Why is it some people make it and some people don't? And there have actually been psychologists that have studied this sort of thing. And I'm talking to you about this today is because your mindset, how you react to the current fear and panic and uncertainty will dictate the outcome come for you. You can't control when the ship's going down. You have no control over the weather and the storms and everything else that's out there. But what you can control is how you respond. So when it all goes pear-shaped like that, 10% of people, there's a 10, 80, 10 rule they've found with survivalism. 10% of people are like the woman on the lifeboat who just scream, just, just lose all touch with reality and get into a highly panicked state, no good for anything, no good for survival. Um, there's another group that, and another guy on the ferry, uh, Paul Barney said, um, was in the lifeboat and he was Mr. Optimus. Come on everybody, we're gonna make it, we're gonna make it, hang in there, is everyone all right? Five more minutes, five more minutes. He dies of a broken heart because you can only kid yourself so much and stay positive. It has to be based in reality. And when you're just false optimism, it's almost head in the sand, total denial. So it's not gonna work either. 80% of us are statues in the storm. We just get that short circuit in our brain of fight, flight or freeze, we freeze. And our brain's furiously going, what do I do? What do you do when a ferry's on its side and there's a storm and there's sub-zero temperature waters? Um, we wait. We wait for authority. We wait for someone to tell us what to do. Is there a message from the government? Is there someone in charge of this ferry? Like sheep, we want to be told because we've got no matrix to gauge what is the right and the wrong response. So we just wait for direction. But for 10% of us, we take control. So 10% of people are survivors. 10% of people will go, okay, hang on a minute. This is bad. I've got no frame of reference for this. So what do I need to do? We don't look to what's the government doing. We don't look to why it's not fair. Survivors keep their cool. They don't fall into this category. They're not in denial. They're not going to say she's going to be all right. I know it will, fingers crossed. Um, 80% of people do nothing. This group is able to say, okay, 
I'm on my own here. I've got to be like MacGyver. I've got to take whatever I can. If I can get a Swiss army knife, if I can get chewing gum and string or whatever I can do, I've got to make a way out of here. And that's what Paul Barney did. And that's what we need to do. And I'm going to give you a little hack for that now. There's a matrix you can use for that. And you can overlay it in bad circumstances. Because most of the time, we look in our rear vision mirror. Why did this happen? Hang on a minute. Two weeks ago, I booked a holiday. Two weeks ago, my kids were still in school. Two weeks ago, I could buy toys toilet paper, I can't deal with this sudden change. And here's the matrix. Unfortunately, I find myself in the position where, and then insert whatever it is. So unfortunately, I find myself in a position where the world is in lockdown, the global economy is changing, where I've lost my job, whatever the case may be. Next step in the matrix is this means I need to. And then you go into action like Paul Barney. This means I need to get back inside. This means I need to get to the other side of the ship and see what's happening there. I've got to formulate an escape route. So same here. Unfortunately, I find myself in the position where the world has radically changed and I've lost my job. This means I need to empower myself and find out what grants are available to me, empower myself and figure out a plan to see things through with my lender or my bank if I can't pay my mortgage, whatever the case may be. It flips our switch from the panic, fight, flight or freeze into the planning logical part of our brain. And if we're a statue in the storm, we never get there. So applying that model will help you trip the switch, not looking in the review mirror, why, how did this happen? What did I do to deserve this? It's not fair to, okay, what am I going to do next? These are my action steps. Don't get me wrong, you're not allowed to take the matrix and say, unfortunately, I find myself in a position where I can't buy toilet paper. This means I need to blame Woolworths and the media and China for starting it or whatever else. That's the blame game. What you need to do is start to prepare. Once you've, op- once you've put that overlay there, take a deep breath. Remember we talked yesterday about Navy SEALs. What Navy SEALs say is when the boat's going down, like the Titanic, when you know that you're on the bow and it's all about to go under, then first of all, take a deep breath because you know that it's gonna get worse before it gets better. Wait for the violent motion to stop. So if the thing's churning around, if the storm's happening, if you're in the eye of the storm and you can't think, then wait for the violent motion to stop. The next step that you'll have to undertake then is just to orientate yourself. So just to be able to say, okay, here's where I am. This is what I need to do. Um, So wait for the violent motion to stop. And next step is to formulate a plan. So go with it. When the violent motion has stopped, relax, surrender, because you need that fight, flight or fright to just dissipate. And then you can look around, orientate yourself, make a plan, make a call as Navy SEALs do. And then once you've made that call, act decisively, but remain flexible. So for example, you might run to the other side of the boat, but the door's locked. You can't then just drop your bundle and give up. You have to be fluid with it. And this is going to change every single day. There'll be something else coming at you and you have to be nimble enough to deal with it. You can't whinge about it. It's not going to help anyone. If you've heard me run through this before, this will be very powerful. This could be a game changer for you. There is a line in the sand. 90% of people play below the line here. Below the line is blame, excuses, justification. And you know what? Often it's right, especially now. It's not your fault that you're here. It's not your fault that all of this has happened. It's totally outside of your control. But blaming and excusing and justifying your circumstances isn't gonna change them. It's not gonna empower you and it's gonna keep you, it's gonna push you down here below the line with 99% of other people. Um, What you need to do is realize there's a lot in life that may not be your fault, but is your responsibility. And above the line comes responsibility. And above the line comes control. 
And that's where you want to be. You need to take control of yourself, your circumstances and what you do when the ship's going down. Responsibility actually means response ability, the ability to respond, the ability to do something and not be a statue in the storm. There are things outside of your control, but there are things that you can influence, things that you can impact and things that you can do right now. So get yourself above the line to become a survivor. A survivor looks at options and there's always options. Even if the options aren't known to you yet, empower yourself to decide what you can do next. We went to a restaurant on the weekend. Luckily we did, that was probably the last time we'd get out. And the owner of our local restaurant was, we said, how's it going? And he said, terrible, I don't know what to do. And if ever I've seen a statue in the storm, that was that man. He just said, I'm waiting. I wish they'd just shut us down. If they shut us down, then I could let people go. I said, but you can let people go. You can stand people down. You can negotiate with your landlord. There's so much that you can do. You don't have to wait for the government to make a call. It's your fiscal and financial responsibility. And he said, oh, it's just not fair. It's just not fair. We brought in wines. We'd imported all this stuff. I've got all this meat in the freezer. And he was looking in the rear view mirror. And yes, it wasn't his fault, but at the end of the day, it's his business, it's his responsibility. He needs to say, unfortunately, I find myself in the position where we're shut down. This means I need to talk to my landlord, do this, do that, take action. Now, there are several types of survivor and you can channel whatever one applies to you. So the first one is your fighter. Fighters have true grit. They just persevere, whatever it is. They've got resilience. They can get pushed down over and over. They're just gonna come back punching. If you don't have that fighter gene, the other proven uh, lowest common denominator of survivals, because they've looked and interviewed hundreds and thousands of people who've survived. Survive means overcome their circumstances. The next type is the believer. A believer, believes in a higher power, the universe, perhaps it's religion, something else is guiding them, something beyond them, they have utmost unwavering faith and that pulls them through. It may be that um, they have, you know, maybe God, it may be the universe, it may be just a sense of calm that this will all be okay, but they never ever give up hope and hope's your connection to getting through, to treading water to the other side of the storm. The next type is the connector. Connectors are people people. Connectors are people who resonate with their community, perhaps it's their family. You would have heard people saying, I, you know, I was about to give up, but then I thought of my kids or my daughter or my husband or my loved ones, and I thought, no. So connectors, what gets them through is the connection with humanity. And that's why it's important to be part of a community. We're all going through this together. This is a great leveler. The mighty are falling, like Qantas is broke. Maybe they'll get bailed out, but at the end of the day, you are never ever too big, too great, too rich, too powerful to be leveled by something like this in a global economy and in a crisis like this. Then we've got our thinkers. Your thinkers are like your MacGyvers. They are the ones who can say, okay, what can I make here? How can I get out? What am I gonna do? I'll run to the other side of the ship. Nope, the door's locked. Okay, plan B, there has to be an exit. Let me see where there's some light coming through. Can I climb up there or whatever? Thinkers plan, their rational brain kicks in. And not to be confused, with the final category, your realists. Realists are the opposite of optimists. They're not pessimists, they just see it for what it is. They stare it down and say, okay, this is what's happening. They call a spade a spade and they, can, they accept the reality and they adapt and survive to it, with it. And that's what we have to do. We have to accept where we are, not go into freeze, not go into overwhelm, not go into hysteria and panic. If the rest of the world is going to hell in a handbasket, that's not on you, that's not your task. 
Your task is to get above the line. Your task is to take responsibility for what you can control. Your task is to flick that switch from, unfortunately, I find myself in this position. Let's not look back at how we got here. Yeah, two weeks ago, we all had a very different reality that has changed on us. Your task now is to say, this means I need to. And tomorrow I'm gonna look at what you need to do because so much has changed. It's just that you've gotta let your brain catch up. Surrender with it, breathe. And tomorrow we'll look at the government grants that are out there, your rights, your obligations, what you can do in business, what you can do with your staff, how you can trade through this on a personal personal level and on a business level and send in your questions ask them below I can answer them live tomorrow I want this to be interactive leave a comment below so that we can stick together so that we can be connectors as a community and think together and rationalize how we all get through this wherever we're at we're all at the same point in the road now and what we do next is what's going to count. I'm going to run through your options tomorrow. Lots of options, lots to learn and I'll catch you at our daily huddle tomorrow. Stay safe in the meantime.